What's up guys? So today I'd like to do a little video on beta alanine. Beta alanine is a supplement that has become quite popular in the past couple of years because manufacturers claim that it can help reduce the onset of fatigue and overall improve muscular endurance. Now this isn't necessarily incorrect, but we do want to take a scientific evidence-based approach and look at how it works, the usage, and the overall dosage that we should take as an athlete and as an initiate exerciser. Let's start with a brief overview of what beta alanine actually is. So first off, we need to understand that it is a non-essential amino acid, meaning in small amounts. Um, obviously supplementing something that your body already creates in small amounts um, can be beneficial or it can be contraindicative. So we're going to discuss a little bit more about um, how much you actually need to take. Um, basically what beta alanine does is it boosts the synthesis of carnosine and carnosine is uh, a, another amino acid that delays the onset of fatigue, but it delays the onset of fatigue specifically in the glycolytic system. Um, we're not going to delve too much into the glycolytic system uh, in this video. I would like to do a future video on uh, the different energy systems, but as a basic overview, the glycolytic system is, as you'll see on the picture to the right, um, a system that deals with energy demands uh, between 60 and 240 seconds. So that can be something like a 400 meter sprint, it could be something like a boxing round, or a trip up the wall if you're rock climbing, um, but it is specific to uh, exercise that is 60 seconds to 240 seconds in duration and generally has a moderate level of difficulty. So this isn't walking on a treadmill. Um, this is doing a sprint for a long time. So how does it really work? We, we have this uh, a scientific term called intramuscular acidosis and it is a major contributor to decreases in exercise performance. Um, this is basically a fancy way of saying uh, we develop lactic acid. Have you ever heard your coaches said we need to get rid of the lactic acid, we need to drain out the lactic acid? Um, that's because when you exercise you slowly build up this lactic acid and we need things that can help buffer the amount of lactic acid that is actually building up. So what carnosine does is it enables the total muscle buffering capacity i.e. your ability to fight acidosis and continue working, continue exercising for longer periods of time. Obviously, if we can continue working past the previous point where we had intramuscular acidosis, then we can increase the amount of work we do, and therefore during an athletic performance, we would outperform the person beside us. Let's talk a little bit about the production of beta alanine. So it's, it's all well and good for me to tell you what it does, but where does it come from? Right, so it's predominantly found in animal-based products. So if you were to eat things like beef, chicken, fish, uh, you would find beta alanine in small doses, but we can supplement it and get a better concentration of just beta alanine so that we can analysis on ourselves. It is produced industrially by the reaction of ammonia with beta propiolactone. And these are two substances that when combined together create beta alanine as a chemical form and then we can supplement that chemical form as a powder. And basically this just helps us um, regulate the amount of dose that we're taking. So you could you could get beta alanine like I said from uh, your diet but you're not really going to get a consistent amount day in and day out. Whereas when you're supplementing something that has been chemically produced we can justify and say pretty easily that we are getting the same dosage every day and then we can accurately base our results off of that dosage and say yes or no if it is working. So how beta alanine works is the accumulation of hydrogen ions in the muscle has been shown to disrupt the resynthesis of phosphorylcreatine. Um, and if that starts to happen and we disrupt the resynthesis of phosphorylcreatine, then we start to get lactic acid buildup. Uh, increasing the muscle carnosine concentration can increase the intracellular buffering capacity. So this is something we talked a little bit about before, um, and thereby increasing the potential delaying of onset of fatigue. So we want to delay that onset of fatigue as much as possible. Imagine doing a sprint. If you've ever done a 400 meter sprint, imagine you get to about 250 or 280 meters and you start to hit this wall. That's lactic acid building up. And what that basically does is it starts to limit your force production. 
If you can't re resynthesize phosphocreatine, you lose force production. It's that simple. Um, so we want to delay the onset of that lactic acid so we can continue to produce force and continue to sprint as fast as we can. And guys, just a quick heads up, all of these quotes are taken from scholarly articles, most of them from the meta-analysis you will see below, um, the effects of beta alanine supplementation on exercise performance uh, by Hobson et al. So you guys can go online and find these articles for yourself and read them for yourself just so that you are sure that the information you're getting is reliable. Looking a little bit more into how it works, the energy demanding exercise creates lactic acid. When lactic acid accumulates, athletic performance will decrease. So in essence, if we supplement beta alanine, it can help to delay the onset of fatigue by buffering and delaying hydrogen plus ions, which would there be transferred into lactic acid. Because most of the energy demands that where lactic acid is produced is during the glycolytic system. It's very rare that you'll have lactic acid build up in a dead sprint that's 100 meters. Um, and if we are looking at the lactic acid system um, specifically, that's for more of a marathon run. So we want to, most exercise that we're doing is specific to the glycolytic system. So when we are performing exercise and supplementing something like beta alanine, we want to stay between that realm of duration because it will help us to distinguish if the supplement is actually working for us. Um, so the study that we looked at um, was the effects of beta alanine supplementation on exercise performance, a meta-analysis by Hobson et al. And basically what they did is, if you don't know what a meta-analysis is, it takes information from several dozens, 20, 30, however many articles it is, puts it together and says, this is what we found consistent throughout all of those articles. So they found that 145 to 179 grams of beta alanine exercise capacity or time to exhaustion was improved by 11.8 to 12%. And those dosages of grams was based over a uh, six to eight week period. Um, so that would average out to about five grams a day. Um, but you can imagine a 12% increase. If you're doing something like a 400 meter sprint, that 12% increase would calculate to about four to five seconds. If you are four to five seconds faster in a race, just because of taking a supplement, that's just, it's amazing. Um, another study, the one below, uh, beta alanine improved sprint performance in endurance cycling, um, analyzed a four to 10 week period. So they gave the athletes um, uh, five grams of beta alanine for four weeks, and then they increased it to six grams uh, after the 10 week period. And they found that muscle carnosine was significantly increased by nearly 60% in four weeks and almost 80% in the 10 week period. So if we have an increased concentration of carnosine already in the muscle, that means that that delayed onset of fatigue won't even occur. We already have the carnosine in there. The buffering capacity will be huge. Let's talk a little bit about the dosage now. So in the meta-analysis, we did not show a clear correlation between dosage and exercise performance. That is to say, we couldn't see that taking three grams was more successful than taking six grams. Um, but what it did show is that um, most of the studies that they examined gave their athletes between three to five grams a day, and that did show positive results. It was very rare that they found a study that did not show positive results after supplementing beta alanine. Many studies administered three grams a day to start and would move to five grams after a four week period. Um, and the study that was on the sprint performance in endurance was increasing the dosage throughout time and they continued to show uh, progressive results. Now, what I wanna make clear is that the, the second study is specific to endurance cycling. So we can't say that because endurance cycling works for this study that it will work for your 400 meter sprint. Um, we can't say that we have to have more research. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that brief analysis on beta alanine, and I hope it does make you think a little bit about uh, sort of expanding what supplements you are taking. Um, there are lots of supplements out there that you can take rather than just supplementing a basic whey protein. You can get a lot more from taking different supplements that give you different results.
If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will leave links to the articles that I used and all the information that I used to collect my data. Guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.